Hi, welcome to the Quipster Film Review Podcast. I'm Vince Leo. I'm the film critic for the website Quipster.net. Thanks so much for joining me here, and I do invite you to go check out my website, 3,800 plus film reviews to read anytime. Just head on over to Quipster.net and read them all at your leisure. Quipster.net, Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R dot net. Today's film is Snowden. It's a drama slash thriller, basically a biopic of a sort. It's an R-rated film because it does contain strong language and some sexuality and nudity, and it runs two hours and 14 minutes. The main star is Joseph Gordon-Levitt, with supporting roles going to Shailene Woodley, Risa Fons, Ben Schnetzer, Tom Wilkinson, Zachary Quinto, Melissa Leo, Timothy Oliphant, Nicolas Cage, and Scott Eastwood. The director is Oliver Stone, who also contributes to the screenplay along with Kieran Fitzgerald, and it's based on a couple of books, The Snowden Files by Luke Harding and Time of the Octopus by Anatoly Kucherina. Now, it would seem a daunting proposition to try to give a dramatization of events and issues that have already been captured very brilliantly on film already just a couple of years prior as Snowden reenacts a good deal of the actual footage that's been captured by documentarian Laura Poitras in her award-winning documentary Citizen Four. I highly recommend that film if you haven't seen it. To be fair, the director and co-screenwriter, Oliver Stone, who's spent a good portion of his filmmaking career exploring the dangers of government tyranny, he's here fleshing out more than that by giving us much more biographical information about his title subject, showing Edward Snowden's time in the military, his obtaining of a job working for the CIA, his eventual hire as a contractor for the NSA, and his longtime relationship with his girlfriend, Lindsay Mills. Unfortunately, just like the opinions that are exhibited by Snowden within the film, the more we know, the less we like what we see. So what would have been, maybe in the past, a contender for an Oscar ends up being just a mildly intriguing, entertaining, while it's on, docudrama. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is the star. He plays Edward Snowden. He does a reasonable interpretation of Snowden's voice and demeanor. Snowden is a lifelong conservative who wants to serve his country after the events of 9-11, but whose military career is cut short because of frequent injuries, he ended up turning his sights toward working to continue to help his country in another capacity through a career in government intelligence. You know, cyber terrorism and whatnot, that ends up becoming another war that he can fight now that he can't really fight physically. Snowden proves to be more than adept at this job, and it allows him to climb the ranks to higher and higher levels of security clearance within the CIA and eventually the NSA. However, the closer that he looks at their programming, the more disturbed Snowden is to find just how intrusive many of the surveillance software and techniques are under both the Bush and Obama administrations, and that leads him to eventually have a crisis of conscience on whether the American public has a right to know about how their privacy has eroded in the computer and smartphone and internet and social media age. As Snowden contends, it's one thing for people to voluntarily give up that information, but when they don't even have a choice in the matter, that becomes a really big problem, and, and people should know that the government is spying on them anytime it wants to. Now, unfortunately, Snowden's story is much more interesting for what he did than it is for who he is, and that relegates much of the build-up to that which has already been captured so well in Citizen Four to be only moderately engaging at best. Stone tries to inject a love story of sorts, and but that proves to be a bit of a bust because there's nothing intrinsically interesting about Snowden's relationship with amateur photographer Lindsay Mills that merits so much screen time except for a somewhat prolonged sex scene and an excuse to show a few instances of provocative pole dancing. The better scenes of the film revolve around Snowden on the job, where he's discovering more each day about how intrusive the U.S. government is when it comes to gathering information which seems to go well above and beyond what's allowable within the law, at least as Snowden understands it. The government is spying on and gathering vast warehouses full of information on just about everyone it wants to, no matter who and what walk of life. They're even searching through private conversations and chats and SMS text messages and pretty much anything to find any scrap of information that it can use for leverage later. Now, the film may have its flaws, but I do think that ultimately it's recommendable because it does retain a modicum of watchability and interest throughout, enough to make for a well-acted, handsomely mounted, occasionally thought-provoking, and moderately entertaining film that 
has a few major faults, for instance, the excessive length at 2 hours and 14 minutes, and a misguided infomercial-style ending that tries in vain to tie the Hollywood story to the real-life story. You know, those are just two of the big flaws that I had with it, and you may find others, depending on your point of view. But despite many attempts to flesh out the character of Edward Snowden as to who he is and why he believes what he believes... Unfortunately, he still remains an enigma throughout, and it doesn't really allow us the chance to see Snowden as heroic as Stone obviously sees him, even for those who firmly believe that Snowden has done the noble thing through his whistleblowing activities. Obviously, that's a very divisive point of view, too, because some people will probably end up not seeing it who happen to believe the other side of things, which is that he's a traitor. If we do end up learning anything, is that the message is more important than the messenger and the code more important than the code breaker. And that means that Snowden, while it is respectable on many levels and it's not poorly put together... It ends up missing the mark of becoming an important film. The kind that really should be a must-see for most people is, well, if you're interested, yeah, go ahead and give it a shot. If you're not, you're not really missing much. You know, and so this is probably not going to get any Oscar recognition, even though it probably was funded with the idea that it could. I would say if you want to see an Oscar winner, go back and see Citizen Four and enjoy that. And that's a very intriguing, very thought-provoking, real-life captured on film, the actual meeting between Snowden and Poitras and a couple of journalists. And you get way more information there than Oliver Stone ends up managing to deliver here. And you don't have to hear a lot of the information that doesn't really pertain to the matter at hand as it does here in the film Snowden. So... I'm going to recommend the film for those people who are definitely interested in this kind of material. I'm going to give it three stars out of four because I think that it does get the job done if you're interested in Snowden's story. Certainly you're going to get that here, but ultimately I don't think that this is worth going out of your way for if you are not as intrigued by Edward Snowden. It's really hard to recommend it above Citizen Four. So if you're interested in this material but you don't want to go out of your way to pay 10 or 15 bucks to go see it in a theater, you can pay just a couple of bucks to watch it streaming in your own home right now if you want to by watching Citizen Four. I highly recommend that one, even though Snowden, I don't think, is a bad film personally. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, I do encourage you to click the subscribe button. I attempt to deliver all of the new and noteworthy films as they are released all throughout the course of this year and hopefully beyond. And if you want to catch any of my older podcasts, you can do so by searching for the Quipster Film Review Podcast on your podcast platform of choice. And if you really want to dig into all of the reviews that I've done over the course of the last 20 years, you can go to my website, quipster.net. That's Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R.net, where you'll get reviews of not only Citizen Four, but most of the Oliver Stone catalog and a bunch of other films that are also related or not related. Quipster.net is where to go. Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R.net. 